and welcome to Diecast Restos. My name is Jason and I have here an MB135 Mercedes 500 SEC in a truly terrible state. Someone has painted every last inch of this in black. The body would have once been red, but they've also assaulted the wheels and the windows. To one-up the former keeper, I plan to fix all of these issues, including the snapped A-pillars, and paint it a far better shade of black, a colour which certainly suited the real car. Here is how this model would have once looked. And here is a similar 560 SEC with the AMG trimmings that the casting received. The model itself was produced between 1984 and 1989 in the Matchbox main line, but also saw releases in the Laser Wheels and Lasertronics lines up until 1991. The first two years in production saw the car painted white, with black AMG tampos on each side and a blue interior. It then appeared in red with the same AMG decals later in 1985, with this design running into 1986, now featuring a black interior. For 86-87, a white car with red and blue number 7 tampos entered the main line, while a red car with orange, yellow and white tampos all over was added to the revived Superfast line during the same period. The final mainline releases were black with gold SEC 500 tampos on each side, with a brown interior. Yep, that was the unmistakable sound of my tap snapping in the post. Perhaps my piece wasn't lubricated enough, in the sage words uttered by Rob from Matchbox Garage. Hopefully there will be enough purchase from the burr on the post to connect the body and the base without gluing. But anyway, the casting was offered in the same red AMG design as the Superfast car between 1988 and 1990 in the Laser Wheel series. It also had a release in the World Class series in 1989, where a white-bodied car received chunky rubber Goodyear branded wheels and trim detailing to the grille and badge, turn signals, tail lights, door handles and had a smaller AMG tampo to the front wings. These did however have their doors sealed shut, interiors removed and windscreens reflective but opaque. Similar models were used in 1990 to 1991 in the Lasertronics line, which had black windscreens but had light up beacons and sirens fitted. These came as either a pace car or as an emergency doctor car. Having removed much of the black paint that had plagued the windscreen, I really have to scrub it to get any last remnants off of it. This will be far from perfect, but I will do my absolute best to reuse this piece. Now let's lose the rest of that black paint. Incredibly, the black paint washed away in the caustic soda to reveal the original paintwork in all its glory. Even the tampo remained. That wasn't worth salvaging though, as a shadow of the black paint remained across the body. But even after a second caustic soda bath, some paint still would not give up. So I need to resort to my rarely used liquid paint stripper to finish the job. Some of this paint stripper has been sat in this tub since my very first restorations back in 2018. So while I do that, a little on the 500 SEC. The coupe version of the W126 platform Mercedes-Benz S-Class launched in 1981 as the successor to the C107 chassis SLC. This was given a new chassis code of C126. The W126 four-door sedan had been in production for two years by the time it was introduced. It was designed by Bruno Sacco with aerodynamics featuring high in the list of priorities to aid fuel efficiency. After being unveiled at the 1981 Frankfurt Motor Show, the 380 and 500 SEC went on sale in September that year. It was the first time an S-Class chassis had been built as a coupe. Of the pre-facelift first series W126s of 1979 to 1985, 
The 500 SEC was a range topper, alongside the 500 SE and long wheelbase 500 SEL sedans. Each were powered by Mercedes M117 5 litre V8, which produced 228 brake horsepower from 1981. In SE and SEC guys, it was capable of 130 miles per hour. The V8 engines during the first series period all had four speed automatic gearboxes. The 500 SEC had anti lock brakes as standard as well as the other carryovers from the S-Class sedan including seatbelt pretensioners, crumple zones, with optional airbags, heated seats, automatic climate control and power seat controls. And there I've just totally snapped off that A-pillar. I was trying to bend it gently back in place. It isn't going too well for me this build is it? So I secure the broken A-pillar back in place with glue and some masking tape as a guide. I'll be painting the base black again and then we'll detail the headlights which form part of it, as well as picking out some of the underside points of interest. Being an AMG model, I've got some 3D printed AMG wheels here to complement, similar to those seen on the car from the image at the start of the video. Speaking of which, AMG offered body kits on all W126 models, with the coupe having a wide body option. They also offered engine tuning upgrades with a popular option, the uprated M117 V8 unit, which was 6 litres with a double overhead camshaft. Some coach builders offered a convertible conversion for the SEC. The facelifted second series went on sale in 1985, and with it came a revised engine lineup. Of the V8 engines, only the 5 litre M117 was carried over. Joining the lineup was a bored out 3.8 litre, up to 4.2, and a bored out 5 litre was pushed to 5.5 litres, creating the 560. This was the most powerful engine fitted to a W126S class. During its 10 years of production, 30,184 500 SECs were built. A further 11,267 380 and 3,680 420 SECs were produced and 28,929 560 SECs during its 6 years in production. The W126 series was the highest volume S-Class on record in terms of production with 74,060 coupes and 818,063 saloons, totalling 892,123 during 12 years of production. I'm now giving my 500 SEC a proper coat of black. Much smoother than the paint applied by a former owner. I noticed that Hot Wheels have released a black 1989 560 SEC AMG spec casting into their main line for 2023. I think that was announced just as I was beginning to dismantle this 500. That has the wide body kit fitted, and while I am a fan, it gave me something to benchmark my custom against. The plan was to always paint mine black and put the AMG wheels on it. I'm hoping the custom wheels will give it the edge, though where I know mine will fall down by comparison is in the window piece, which will look far from fresh. And I know I can't recreate the accuracy of the headlights and taillight tampos either. The Citadel gloss over chrome for the front and Citadel over Sharpie over chrome for the back will have to do. Speaking of, let's get cracking with the base level detailing. What I love about these old Mercs is how menacing they look in black, so I think the fewer highlights the better, less is more as they say. I'm limiting the detail to the turn signals in their orange casing on the front, headlights on the base, inset fog lamps and three pointed star with central chrome extension. On the back it's the light clusters and small three pointed star in the middle, while I create a white registration plate with my Uniposca pen. The sides get none at all, except for the reflection of the door mirrors. 
So I layer on the red and orange Sharpie to complete those period specific light clusters and then run over the 500 SEC characters with my Micron pen to bolster the lettering visibility. When it comes to shading, I won't be applying it in many areas, but the clusters I will go in heavy on. I want to create a slightly non-OEM smokes look without overdoing it. I try to give some depth to those flat rectangular headlamps with a drop more and then go to town on the bits that nobody except you or I will ever see. Once dry, I entomb the detail in clear before giving my murky old window piece a rear view mirror. Let's now reconstruct this Matchbox 500 SEC. First of all, I attach that window piece that I've worked so hard on to return to a respectable condition. Next, I place in the washed interior piece. Lastly, with wheels already fitted and suitably lowered with some extra bits under the axles, I slot in the headlights and push down over that tap filled post. Let's remind ourselves then how my Matchbox Mercedes 500 SEC started off looking. A former owner had slapped on some thick matte paint across the entire thing, leaving very little trace of its original red colour. Both A-pillars had snapped at their bases, and one even came free entirely while I was attempting to repair it. But I set out on this build to improve on what the last owner had started, and here it is now. It's a whole lot better in gloss, without paint covering the windows and wheels, and with solid A-pillars. You'll note it is sitting slightly lower on the custom AMG rims, and the overall stance looks much improved. I've done all I could to improve the window situation, with that paint pretty difficult to shift from it. But I've loved detailing this classic Merc with some subtle smoked effect light clusters and minimal front end chrome trim. How do you think I did compared to the Hot Wheels release? Let me know in the comments and give the video a thumbs up if you like the result. Subscribe if you want to see more diecast customs and help support the channel by pledging on Patreon. My thanks as always go to my loyal band of followers. So all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.